always did art as far back as I can remember. Hey, look up with those angel eyes. Ethan! Dad! I remember what I'm fighting for. Oh, the victory cannot be denied. You're the fire in my I think when I was a teenager, I didn't care about the farm or what was going on there. I didn't appreciate it, but going away and coming back and having my kids and giving them that same kind of like gift that my parents gave me, that was really important. <laughs> Elise and my son Roger John were deployed 14 months for Elise and Roger was there for uh, 10 months, so they were both there together, and those were a lot of sleepless nights for my wife and, and for me. Deployment, particularly in a combat zone, will change everybody. Um, and she did come back changed. Elise always has had an independent streak, always has marched to the beat of her own drummer. Art is this physical act that allows me to work through and untangle and unpack. The experience of going to war is this timeless experience. When I came back and started to process these things, I think that's what I was really tapping into, this story, this vast oceanic narrative of people who fight and go to war. My dad, was always a natural artist. I saw that in Elise immediately. His creativity and his ability was innate in her. Even though I had that art in me, I knew I could always come back to it. I grew up with a dad and a brother who were always messing around with trucks and guns, and I just really wanted that on my own, on my own terms. I was just always drawn to that, and a tomboy, and I was like, I'm gonna go do this. I dropped out of art school after 9-11. I joined as a heavy rail vehicle mechanic. It kind of makes sense that our solar... I went back to grad school for art, and I had this close-knit community of artists who were like, there's nothing wrong with you letting your guard down and sharing your story. Everything changed after that. The art that I make now, post, War is very different from what I made in art school before I joined. This piece is the piece that was um, done for Rethink Vets. I called it the thing that we used to hold everything together. I filled them with things that reminded me of certain landscapes. And this is just kind of what I imagined. If we applied ritual to medicine, this is what I pictured it looking like. I'm a morning person, so I like to get out here before I do anything. It's really special. This is like my vacation. This is where my mind is always coming back to. It's not just a building, you know? It's where all the magic happens. All my experiences in the military and life condensed down into the body. Like, what can the body say about what it's been through, what it goes through? And so my work is figural because I believe in the patriotism of the human body. I think this is the last refuge of individualism. It's the last place where you're truly free. I just been putting portals on everything. It's not enough to just make work and pile it up in the rafters. I want to share it with people and I want to make connections. I think being an installation artist kind of goes hand in hand with that because it's not just about art on the wall, it's about how it smells, how it feels, how it looks with everything else around it. It's using all the senses. I love the way my kids smell after they come in from being outside. Like a country kid has a smell, like they just smell like dirt and air and it's just on their hair and it's so amazing. Home smells like so many different things. It's just like nothing else.